regression now says if there is a relationship, we need to be able to define that relationship by one single straight line. OK, so we have a set of points and in regression, what we're trying to do is fit a line to those set of points. And what we're looking for is the best line that represents those set of points. The best line that will represent those set of points, because I could draw a lot of different lines, but the one we want is the one we draw such that the distance between the points and the line is the minimum. That's what we want. So that's the one that will best represent the set of points. So that's why the regression line is called the line of best fit. And it's also called the least squares line. OK, it's also called the least squares line. So it uses what we call the least squares principle. For example, when we find the distances between the point here and the line, see the distances below the line will be equal to the distances above the line. So just like what we did when we calculated variance, we can just add all of them up, we get zero. So we square those distances and then the formula we use or the software will find the line that gives us the shortest of the distances between the points and the line. You can see there's a negative relationship here. Here we're looking at relationship between how long customers wait at a doctor's office and the satisfaction rating and you can see that the relationship is negative here that the longer customers wait the lower they rated the service you can see the satisfaction rating is low if they waited a long time which of course what you'll expect right regression equation so that line actually has an equation if you remember some people might remember from high school uh, y equals mx plus b equation of a line. So basically, m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. So something similar is what we're trying to do here. It's just that we are more interested in what does the slope in a particular situation mean? What does the y, sorry, slope is m in this case. Y-intercept is b. What does the y-intercept mean? Okay, what we just need to know is that when you have the equation, the standalone value, like this is your y-intercept, and the one that is multiplying the x is the slope, okay? So very important that this is the slope and the standalone guy is your y-intercept. So what we're trying to do is fit a line to that relationship. So you will see the equation written in this form or in that form. And one thing you'll notice that we have a hat on that y, okay? So, because in regression, we have a difference between y and y hat. Now, y are the actual values of y. So, when we list the values of x and y, so we say these are x values, 2, 4, 6, and these are y values, right? 5, 8, 11, and so on. These are the actual y values, the actual point. But then when we draw the line, because when we obtain an equation, so for example, let's assume I have an equation that says y equals 2 plus, or let's say 1 plus 2x, something like that. So if this is my equation of the line, then this one here is my y hat, because all the points are not on the line, okay? So this one will be used to predict my y values. So for example, if I have this equation, my y at here, if I plug in a 2 into that equation, I will get a 5, all right. Or if I plug in a 4, I will get a 9. If I plug in a 6, I will get a 13. So you can see that the actual points may be different from the line. The y at is an estimate based on the actual values of y we have. Here is what we're trying to do. So let me, let me show you here. This point here, you can call it 19, x is 19 here, and y is, let's just say, 80 here, okay? So that point on your line will be 19 and 80, okay? That point there, okay? So now on the line, on the line, that point is 19 and, and let's say 75. On the line. Okay. So 
question is, why do we need the line? For several reasons. Sometimes we want to predict something. We want to estimate. So, for example, 25 years. If somebody waits for 25 minutes, we can use that because we have nobody here that actually waited for 25 minutes. We can use that here and trace it to the line and estimate that that person, you see that? That person will rate that hospital or doctor's office, will give them a weight rating of about 70. Okay, so that is your Y hat. You don't have Y. You don't actually have someone that waited for 25 minutes. You understand? So that is what why we obtain the equation of the line and then we use it for prediction. So we obtain that equation of that line and then we just use it to estimate. And sometimes we use it to project a little bit into the future, but we don't want to do that uh, because sometimes the values might change after a particular range. For example, right, when, when kids are young, right, the amount of food they can eat starts to increase. And then when they get to a particular age, the amount of food they eat does not really change that much anymore. So that's why we don't use the regression line to project too far outside of the range of data values we have. Because if you think the amount of food they eat is increasing and you just keep projecting, right, you will be going up. Whereas after a particular age, it just stays flat. So anyway, let's go back here. So again, we have formulas here, which we're not going to be using for the slope and the y intercept here. But one thing we will be required to do is know what the slope and y intercept mean, especially the slope. Very important because it's used a lot to describe relationships. Let's talk about the y intercept. This is the equation of this line. We didn't put a hat on the y because we actually don't have points around here. So we just say this is the equation of the line. Now, this is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. This, this is your y-axis here. So that point there is called the y-intercept. The point where the line, the equation of the line, crosses the y-axis is the y-intercept. Okay, In this case, it's 2. But the way we would like to see the y-intercept is the value of y when x is zero, right? And you can see x is zero here. X is zero here. So it's the value of y when x is zero. So whatever we're trying to measure, when that thing is zero, then the y-intercept represents the value of y or the expected value of y. Now, what about slope? Slope is rise over run, rise over run. Although we want a deeper meaning than that, but mainly, if you want to do this geometrically, what you do is you calculate this distance. This distance from here to there is 6. This distance from here to there is 2. Then you will say the slope is 3. That's if you're doing it geometrically. But what we're really interested in is the real interpretation of the slope. So let's see how it works. I'm going to use this equation here and then come up with some numbers over here. So X and Y. So I'm going to say I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So I'm going to plug in 0 here. I'm going to get a 2, plug in 1. I'm going to get 5, and then 8, and then 11, and then 14, and then 17, and so on. Now, notice that as X increases by 1, Y is increasing by 3. For every unit increase in X, Y increases by the amount of slope. So see the slope here is 3. So that's the definition we will be working with. What is the definition of the slope? Slope is the amount of change in Y for a unit increase in X. By unit, we mean 1. How much we expect Y to change for a unit increase if X changes by 1? by how much we expect y to change. So that is our definition of slope. So here's just a quick example. So here we're looking at some people with prior convictions, how many times they've been convicted in the past and how long they were sentenced for in years. So we have 
all these numbers here which are plotted here. So these are the points and that is the line. So we use software to generate the equation which you see up here and which is also down here, which is the regression equation. So from this equation, you can see that this is your y-intercept and this is your slope. So if we ask you to interpret the y-intercept is essentially amount of sentencing or sentence that you expect someone with zero priors to have. That is when X is zero, Y will be this number. So if someone has zero priors, that is zero prior convictions, we expect them to be sentenced to two years on average. Again, these things are averages, okay? So that's how we will interpret the y-intercept. That is, if prior is zero, right, what is sentence going to be pretty much on average? Now, what about the slope? How do we interpret that? So from what we saw before, we said slope means if x goes up by one, by how much will y change? In this case, it's telling us y will go up by about 2.8. So for every additional conviction, sentence length increases on average by about 2.8 years for that particular kind of crime. So that is what it's saying. So that's what is explained here. For every additional conviction, sentence length increases on average by about 2.8 years. But the primary goal of obtaining this line, like I said, is to use it to make estimates or make predictions. So for example, if you look here, we don't have anybody, we don't have anybody here with six prior convictions. So we can trace that to the line here and then bring it over here. We can use that to estimate the sentence length for someone with six prior convictions. All we just need to do is plug that into the equations. So X is six and we plug that into the equation and it will give us approximately 19. So we'll plug that in. So that is what we use that for. And then we have how this is done in Excel here. We also have a BA2 plus calculator. You can also use that to generate your slope and y-intercept. The coefficient of determination. Now, the coefficient of determination is R squared. We use uppercase R for other reasons, but it is essentially the same thing as just taking the R, the correlation coefficient that we had before, and just squaring it. That is essentially the same thing, which means that your R squared will have to be between 0 and 1, because remember, your R is between negative 1 and 1. But what does it mean? Loosely, this is what it means. So let's take X as the time spent on watching videos in this class, okay, for students last semester, and Y is their final grade. So for this student, we're gonna say, how, how many hours did this person, or let's say minutes. So this person watched for 305 minutes, grade was 75, this person watched for 420 minutes, grade was 82, this person watched for only 95 minutes and still manage to get a 71 and so on. So let's assume we will now run this in Excel and we compute R squared and we find that R squared is something like 0.4. So what is this telling us is this. So it's called determination, coefficient of determination. So it's saying final grades in this course are determined, okay, basically I'm talking loosely here, determined by the time spent watching videos 40% of the time. Better way, 40% of what makes your final grade what it is can be attributed to how much time you spend watching those videos. So 40% of what makes, the word we use is variation, which we're gonna get into. That is 40% of what makes a student grade differ from or vary or change from one person to another is time spent watching videos. So we're essentially saying that the remaining 60% of the time, other factors are responsible. 
there are a lot of other factors that could be responsible for the remainder 60 percent so that's what we mean by coefficient of determination so again if i throw you that number you can have a general idea of what it means so we're just saying uh if this is final grade and we want to say what is determining final grade uh we will say 40 percent of it will be time spent on videos okay and then we're going to have other things fill in the rest of it so the way we say it technically is this we say is the percent or proportion of the variation so variation again means when you move around how the values are changing in y y in this case is great proportion of variation in y that is explained so that is a functional word here the key word is explained so watch of that word when we're talking about r squared so explained or accounted for by the variation in x or we sometimes just say by x so basically how much changes in y can be attributed to x that is what r squared is so in this case we're saying the amount of changes in final grade that is attributable or that x captures is 40 percent so in the last question we did r squared will be this number and it just we just use that definition we say this percent of the variation in y is explained by x so sometimes if i tell you that r correlation coefficient is 0.4 and then r squared coefficient of determination will be 0.4 squared which is 0.16 but if i tell you that r squared is 0.64 and that r is 0.8 is that correct it is partially correct because r could also have been negative 0.8 because if you square this you will get 0.64 if you square this one you will get 0.64 right okay so because when you take the square root of a number r is supposed to be plus or minus right okay so question is because this is what we give you in some questions we give it to you and then we want you to pick one but then we will give you additional information and the additional information will have to be the relationship is it positive or negative but then we we won't really give it to you explicitly and tell you the relationship is positive what we do is we give you the equation of the line. So we could say the equation of the line is uh, negative 3x plus 2. Okay? So if we give you that, then you can go look at the slope. See, your slope and, the, and r will always have the same sign. Because if it's sloping upwards, then the correlation will also be upwards. So once we give you that, you will know that this one here has to be a negative relationship. Okay? But if it changes and becomes negative 3 plus 2x, then that is a positive relationship, right? Because the slope is 2 now. Okay, so let's go again. So I said, if we give you r squared, and we, it's a multiple choice question, and then we give you some option, including this and that. But like I said, we will give you additional information like, oh, this is the equation of the line, okay? But most people don't see that. They just say, okay, I have R squared. I want to find R. They take the square root. The calculation shows 0.8. They pick 0.8 and move on. They could get lucky if the slope is positive. See, the slope is positive here. But if the slope is negative, right, then this becomes the answer, right? Okay. 